welcome back. Now we're going to do some class examples. We're going to start with a class example for revenue recognition, but for sale of goods with installation and testing. I.e. this is a subheading or part of goods shipped subject to conditions. Um, remember the principle here is you will only recognize a revenue once the conditions are met. So let's go through an example. In May 2014, A Limited entered into an agreement to develop and install an accounting information system for a client. So this cost 1 million and 50,000 and this was paid to A Limited on the 15th of May 2014. Remember this was stated to include VAT. So what do we need to do? We need to times by 14 over 114 to get the VAT amount, okay? Because it's inclusive. Installation and testing, however, were completed on the 27th of June, and I've told you that this was a significant part of the contract. Okay, included in the selling price was a full maintenance plan. That's got nothing to do with the installation and testing. That is a service component. Okay, so we're just testing, if you remember, that the different components of revenue need to be recognized separately. Okay, and this maintenance plan a agreed to perform monthly maintenance for a period of two years after the date of installation. So that is after the 27th of June 2014. So we'll start there from July. Such maintenance would normally be charged for separately at 3,000, and I'm using CU, currency units could be rands, dollars, euros, pounds, whatever. And I said that 3,000 this time was excluding VAT. So if I want to work out the VAT on that, it will be 14 over. 100. Okay, so I've got two required. I want you to journalize the transaction on the 15th of May on the date that the transaction first is entered into. Then I want the journal on the 27th of June. So that's number two and May was number one. Great, I've set out some space, but you're going to do this journal first together. So I want you to go push pause and try and do this journal quickly for me now, please. Okay, assuming that you've done the journal, on the 15th of May, this is required number one, we're going to have to do the following. We will debit bank with the full amount that we are receiving, namely the 1 million and 50,000. We receive that cash on the 15th of May either way. We then deliver the accounting package, but we still need to go and install it. Okay, but remember here, the one thing which people always forget to do, especially in academic circles, is you were told that that 1 million and 50 includes VAT. Now that VAT here is a VAT output, a liability in financial position. Your calculation, as I noted when I was going through the question with you, 1 million and 50,000 times, well, 14 over 114, because the 1 million and 50 was inclusive of VAT. So that gives me a VAT liability of 128.947. Remember tax based on the, the VAT is based on the contract account and it's based on the earlier of receipt or accrual. Okay, then let's fill out the easy part. The first one is your deferred revenue. And we'll split out the services component. And that is a financial position account, remember, we will only recognize the revenue from the services, the maintenance plan, as and when the services are provided. So that will be based on 12 months times by two years. And I told you it would be 3,000 currency units per month if it was charged for separately. So that gives me a total of 72,000 that will defer that revenue, it's income received in advance, and you'll recognize it as and when the services are provided. The question now is, what do you do with the revenue from the accounting package that you've supplied? Can you recognize it as revenue in profit and loss straight away? No, you can't. Okay, why? Because the installation and testing are not yet complete. 
Okay, it was an integral part of the service contract. So what, do I, what will I do here? I will go credit deferred revenue from sale of goods in financial position, please, ladies and gentlemen. And this will be my balancing figure of 766.494. Okay, that's here. I'm just using a balancing figure. Okay, so not recognizing revenue in profit and loss. Why? Because the installation is not yet complete. Very important that you get that conceptually right in your head. Okay, so that's journal number one on the 15th of May. Part two, I asked for the journal on the 27th of June. And on this date, the installation and testing are now complete. And now I'll recognize the revenue in PL. Okay, and remember, revenue from sale of goods, recognize everything in PL 100% on transaction date. This is now the transaction date, please. So on the 27th of June, I will go debit the deferred revenue. That was previously credited for sale of goods in financial position. And that was an amount of 766,494. And I will credit revenue from sale of goods in profit or loss 100% 766,494. Once again, why is it going to profit and loss now? Because the testing and installation are complete. The only scenario where this would be different is if the testing and installation was an insignificant part of the contract. Then I would have recognized revenue 100% on the previous journal, not when installation is complete. But here, the installation is assumed to be significant as stated in the question. I hope this clarifies. Please, this is done poorly in practice and students need to know this principle. It will be tested. Thank you.